Welcome back. We want to turn to Afghanistan now. The president standing by his decision to rush U.S. troops, Americans and allies out of that country. The evacuation efforts filled with stunning drama marked the end of America's longest war. The final cargo plane left Kabul one minute before midnight. Army Major Chris Donahue, commander of the 82nd Airborne, was the last American soldier on board. But the challenges for President Biden are far from over. Refugees are arriving by the day in the U.S. The Taliban now controls more territory right now than it did before the U.S. went to Afghanistan 20 years ago. And somewhere between 100 and 200 Americans are still in Afghanistan right now. White House correspondent Allison Harris is live for us in the nation's capital tonight. Allison, the president addressed all of this today. He did, Marnie. The president called the airlift out of Afghanistan a mission of mercy, evacuating more than 120,000 people. But even the president admits that there are still Americans on the ground in Afghanistan who want to get out. And now there are no American boots on the ground to help them leave. President Biden today standing by his decision. I was not going to extend this forever war. And I was not extending a forever exit. President Biden putting the pullout squarely on his shoulders. I take responsibility for the decision. Now, some say we should have started mass evacuation sooner. And couldn't this have been done, have been done in a more orderly manner? I respectfully disagree. The president saying the decision to complete the drawdown while as many as 200 Americans who want to leave Afghanistan remain in the country was unanimous among Joint Chiefs and commanders on the ground. The bottom line, 90 percent of Americans in Afghanistan who wanted to leave were able to leave. The president says diplomatic pressure against the Taliban will force them to cooperate and allow those that remain to leave. Impeach Biden. Impeach Kamala Harris. Today, some conservative Republicans going so far as to call for the impeachment of the president, secretary of defense, and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We now have Americans stuck in Afghanistan, the Taliban in charge. The president calling the biggest airlift in U.S. history an extraordinary success thanks to heroic service members. 13 gave their lives, 20 were wounded. The president saying the war is over, but the U.S. is far from done. The United States will never rest. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We'll hunt you down to the ends of the earth and we will you will pay the ultimate price. President Biden today also continued to drive home his reasoning for getting out of Afghanistan, saying that the former president, former President Trump, made the agreement with the Taliban to uh, remove U.S. troops by May 1st. The president saying that he had the decision to either surge troops or withdraw them entirely, and also saying that the terror threat to the U.S. has moved. It has evolved. Tomorrow we will hear from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs as well as the Secretary of Defense. Marnie? We'll be watching that. Allison, what do we know about the Americans who are still there? So the president says that they have received 19 warnings since March telling them to leave Afghanistan. And the president and the secretary of state say that many of these people are dual citizens. They are Afghan Amer Americans, and many of them have spent the majority of their lives in Afghanistan or they have family in the region. The president and the press secretary here at the White House explaining that these are difficult decisions that have changed for some of these people who have been unsure about whether they should leave loved ones or family behind in Afghanistan and leave for safety in America. Marty? And if they'll now be able to. Allison, thank you. Emily Harding is the